Obviously, Michael Trigg has, has kind of a breakout performance. I would say it's a partial breakout, I guess. Uh, you know, makes the big catch, has a couple penalties. What did you kind of, how did you assess his overall performance on Saturday? I think you saw flashes of what you've seen in practice, right? Uh, him making a big play, um, you know, almost like an impactful play. Um, you saw him do some freshman things, right? And so that's just part of the that's part of the process with Mike. Is, is he's going to do some really, really, really special things. But again, at the end of the day, he is a freshman. And he's still learning how to play football. He's learning how to play football the right way. Um, and he knows, you know, and, and sometimes I think as a freshman, especially, you know, Trig, Trig's a competitive dude. And if, if you go back to his high school days where he's, he's a basketball player and on the court, I mean, he's, he's, he's ruthless. Um, it's the same way in the football field. He's a ruthless competitor. It's just one of those things we got. It's a process of, of keeping those emotions in check because now flags come, right? And big time plays get called back or big time plays end up being drops. Um, so he's learning that. And again, uh, he's doing well. I mean, I, I, that was expected. And, and I think that gives him confidence moving forward. And I think you see a lot more of it as we go through as, this season. Is there a good example of the ruthlessness in a good way? That you've seen either from high school or since he's been here? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's all it's all comes from just being an ultimate ultimate competitor. There's nothing you know malicious about it. It's just when the when the ball is snapped or when the ball is in play in basketball, he's here to beat you, and that's his mentality. And like I said, he's, he gets he gets emotional about it because that's what he wants to do. That's what he's here to do is to win. It's just in between the whistles. What have you seen from him over the past couple of weeks that you know make you interested him with more more playing time, being him, making him more involved in the offense? Uh, it's just the process of him getting confident in the playbook, you know, in the schemes. Um, you know, early in the in fall camp and even early in the season, it's it's one of those things we're signaling to him, and he's still looking back at me like, "What do I got? What do I got?" And now it's to a point where it's almost like, "Hey, I'm, I'm yelling at him when he has it. He kind of weighs me off. Like I already got, I got it, coach. I got it." You know, and so you know, just, just confidence in, in the fact that he can go out there and and do it with, by himself without having somebody tell him what to do. What impact is Drake having? on the defenses that you guys are seeing. Obviously on Trigg's touchdown, you know, clears out a side for him for that one-on-one opportunity. Just in general, what, what impact is he having? Well, that one, right, you know, if you look at Colorado, they tried to they tried to double him a ton, um, which obviously created more opportunity for other receivers, especially you know, Triggs on the on the on the fade down the sideline, and then the touchdown to uh, to Gary, um, and then and, and going into uh, their end zone, it was uh, they, they tripled Drake, which allowed you know actually had three people open on that play, and so it's just creating more opportunity for other guys, and uh, you know we gotta get creative and find different ways to get Drake the football because eventually. They are going to just triple it. You know, they're going to try to take him out of the game and say, "Hey, you got to beat, beat us without him." So we're going to have to get creative in ways to get him touches. But at the same time, those other guys got to show up too. And I think that's their mentality. Um, I think Drake, you know, being a good teammate that he is, knows that. You know, he's not a selfish teammate to where, you know, if he's getting doubled that day, he's 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 upset with like, "Oh man, the ball's not finding me." He understands, man. They're trying to take me out of it. Somebody else is going to have to make a play. And he's an, he's an encouraging teammate, great leader for us. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see which one of those guys steps up when their time is called. How valuable is the run game to keeping the defense honest so they can't put three guys on him? I mean, even the, the Keontae long run, the safety is overplaying to his side, which gives him that seam to run through as well. How, how valuable is the run game to, to be able to keep, to keep defenses honest, I guess? Yeah, I mean, anybody, you know, most Spread teams, a lot of people are starting to draw more and more people back, you know, taking away passing lanes. You have to be able to run the football. And uh, you have to be able to, to show that you can effectively run the football. So we got to continue to put put that on tape. I think we've done a good job, of, you know, so far. I think there's more out there for us. Um, I don't think we've reached our potential in the run game yet, but I think there's more uh, there's more opportunity there for us. I think we're, we're, we're on the right path. I think we're close. Uh, to being really, really dominant in that, in that, in that you know, part of our uh, our scheme. And so you add that to Drake, and you add that to Trigg, and you got that to Gary, now, you, now, you're, now you're dangerous. So you said you talked about how other receivers need to step up, you know, because you're going to uh, you're gonna get on them with a triple team. What ways do they need to show up in the game to, like, you know, kind of help that out? You know, that's just when, like, what, like Gary did. When, when the ball is finding you, and it finds you in the end zone, make a play. And when Trick, you know, it finds you on a on a on an inside phase, make the play. And if we continue to have guys do that, 
now now it's hard to defend us, right? And you look in the past, you know, we had Pittman, we had Amon Ra, we had TV. Which one are you going to double? You double Pittman, now Amon Ra and TV are creating, you know, big time plays all over the field. Well, if we can get two of those guys, two or three guys going like that, whether it be Gary, whether it be Taj, whether it be Trig, well, now we're back to where, you know, we were in, in 2019. Do you feel like the getting Gary, I mean, getting uh, Taj the ball short, letting him kind of use his vision, use his uh, maneuverability, help him gain a little bit of confidence, especially after the Oregon State game? Yeah, and I think, you know, Taj, again, Taj is ultimate competitor. I mean, he is he's hard on himself. Um, he wants to do exactly the way you teach him to do it. He's going to do it a million miles per hour. Um, and I think, you know, transitioning here, I think he started off really hot in Kent, kind of cooled off, kind of got his head a little bit, lost a little confidence, and now all of a sudden he makes a few plays like he did in Colorado, and here it goes again. All right, and, I, and I'm a big believer in confidence, and I think especially at, rec at the receiver position, once those guys make a few plays, like Trigg, like Taj, then all of a sudden he keeps going up and up and up. So I'm excited to kind of see where Taj, Taj takes it.